good morning and welcome to yet another episode of my PI dream today is Thursday uh, today is built 22 day in the construction at Villa Feliz uh, today I believe what we're gonna be doing primarily as long as the weather holds out a little bit cloudy but very nice and cool this morning but I think today's schedule is to focus on the the uh, the forms that are going around the tie beams and the columns uh, uh, that we have in the ground right now and I want to get that done as quick as possible so we can get on with the pour which I think is going to happen on Saturday tomorrow very big day world BEX up in Manila uh, my contractor and I are going to ride up there and we're going to s source and look for some of the vendors up there that we might use for some of the building material uh, during the construction phase of Villa Feliz and uh, it should be a very exciting day the latest and greatest technologies in home building is going to be available up there so I so anyway <laughs> let me go uh, back and and uh, give dog a treat this morning and then uh, off to the job site so without further delay let's get today's video underway <laughs> What is that? Bhutan? Ah. Yes. How much? You like milk? Uh, please. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, James. How are you today? How are you? Uh, hi, Tess. For, to, for tonight? For, for tonight? For tonight? Oh, with the eggplant. With the eggplant. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Um, and pork with coconut milk and beans. Yes, I yes. Spicy. Absolutely. One of each, right? Yes. One, one. All right, I'm going to eat good tonight. Very good. Thank you, Tess. Ah, good morning. Hey, Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda. How, how are you? How are you today? Good. I'm good. Uh, you're good. You got, oh, you got the chips out, not in the bag anymore. It's good. Oh, yeah. Let's get. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, let's get the what the cheat. What's the cheesy one? You have? Okay, I'll do. I'll do. A, I'll do a Alibaba crunchy corn, and one other. What's another good one? What's that? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and one of those. Uh, 14, right? 5, 10, 12. Ah, uh, salamat po. Where are you? Oh, yeah. what, what are you doing up there? Are you, are you, oh, are you cleaning? Oh, oh. How are you today, Diddy? Oh, I forgot, I forgot the lettuce yesterday. Oh, I forgot. The, the lettuce, I forgot. Today? Okay, okay. I totally forgot to get the lettuce from Deirdre yesterday. Uh, the gardener that was that got the ban that was doing all the bamboo in the in his uh, in his garden over here. So I, ca I can't forget that. Oh, uh, I tell you, I'm getting old. Oh look! Oh look at that! Look what he has done today. Look at the updates to this. Ah. Uh.
can see uh, beehive of activity today. All the workers doing uh, their work. <laughs> so actually everything's going well. I had, I'm premature in my assessment yesterday um, at, the, at the close of business. I did a quick scan. I was so preoccupied with, uh, with the, the, our guests that were visiting uh, and Adrian, Adrian and Connie. And uh, I did a real quick assessment at the very end of the day and I thought all the tie beams would, were done. But actually this one little section uh, right here, you see right here, they're actually finishing that. All the other tie beams are done, so, uh, but they're knocking that out. They'll probably have that one done um, before lunch. And we're also working on the forms today. So actually, actually good progress going on right now. And you can see, <laughs> this, this is my electrician. <laughs> this is my electrician over there. And he's actually doing the run for, like I was showing you earlier, the wire that goes across from the bunkhouse. Uh, over to the tree, over to more bamboo, over to more bamboo, and and it will finally make it inside by Kubo, and and uh, very soon <laughs> I'll have some electricity inside there, and I can hook the laptop up. Anyway, you can see we actually started with number six, which is which is the, the same wire that we got running from the meter, 300 meters over here. And this, this is actually, actually extra leftover number six cable that we have up here. And then they ran out at this point, so they're, they're gonna use single strand. But this is, not a, this is not a permanent solution. This is just something to get me some power inside there. And then once the house goes, goes up or at some point when all this area here is all clean, what we'll do is we'll put the, uh, the, the correct uh, underground bari variable cable and we'll actually have power back to the, to the Baje Kubo. Tip, tip, tip of the day. When, when it comes to the electrical install, you see we're doing this in the background. This is just a temporary thing. This is just to get me some power temporarily to get the, that's not gonna be the permanent solution, of course. But when it comes to electrical, you want to have a well-planned out uh, idea way before you actually start building your house. Because now is the time, uh, and when the walls start going up, now is the time to actually implement all those things that you've thought out over the months or the years and not you don't want to wait until after the house is constructed and case in point for me uh, I late and it was it wasn't that long ago of course I said we've we've had this this plan in effect for about five years we bought the property about six years ago so things that we considered later on is for expansion you always need to think about expansion uh, because you don't want to be trying to run cables through concrete walls and everything like that after the house is built so make sure that you have enough service outlets in places that you might even think that you're gonna need later on. So for us, you see, this is the back wall. Right here, this is the back wall house. This is the backyard, this is the back wall. This area right here, there's gonna be a bedroom here, bathroom, bedroom, but this is gonna be a balcony that's gonna be on the back of this bedroom right here. Well, then we're gonna have 1.1 meter above ground, which is gonna be the top of the garage. It's cool. It originally, well, not originally, but mm, the second plan it was gonna be 1.1 meter subfloor, and then we went back to the original plan of having a garage. So regardless of whether it's the, the subfloor or whether it is the, uh, uh, the very top of the, of the garage, we're gonna have a service outlet right here on the outside of the house a, uh, uh, with ground fault, fault isolation for safety. And uh, this is gonna be, if we need to run garden tools or something like that in the back, but also we're gonna have a uh, electrical connection that's gonna be tied off and pre-run that's gonna run to the breaker box in the, in the center of the house in the event that we want to do back here in the backyard, if we want to do like a koi pond, or if we want to do a water feature, or also we're going to need permanent power that's going to take us back to the Bahi Kubo. At a time. Also, you're going to need to think about things like your perimeter fence that you got going around your house. Do I do I want lighting inside that? Well, if you want lighting for that, uh, you're going to need some kind of um, power to go to those lights. So these are the kind of things that you need to, to think about. And that's what we added later on. Originally, it was just a, a regular a regular fence, and then we're like, uh, at nighttime for ambience and for safety and things like that, if we are entertaining, we want to have lights that go all the way around. So they're going to run from the breaker box, again, there in the center, 
and we'll have perimeter lights all the way around and inside. Also, while we are on the topic of electrical, thinking about electrical for further on down the road, you need to be thinking about things like CCTV connections, Ethernet connections, anything that needs to be run inside the wall ahead of time. So what we're doing in this house, and you'll see again as we get later to those to those specific segments in the in the uh, My PI Dream episodes, you will see that we're going to be doing. We'll, we'll have CCTV run throughout the in, uh, in entire house with security cameras all through the house, and for the perimeter. And we will also have Ethernet. And you, you might say, you know, Ethernet, Ethernet. That's like old school, something like that. Well, Ethernet actually is. It's it's a it's a better option than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a convenience option. But you have limited runs and you have limited bandwidth when you're doing on Wi-Fi. So if you can run like a, a, a Cat 5 or a Cat 6 even better throughout your entire house and you tie it into a master, uh, your, either your cable modem or your fiber modem or even if you have a DSL, if you connect everything into that and you use a distribution point from that to all your smart devices in your house, like your, your smart TVs or your, your smart projectors or, or the electronics that require... Um, some type of a network connection, Ethernet is the way to go. So think about where you're going to connect those devices up and make sure you have runs going to a central location so that you can you can do the interfacing between all those devices and your, your router or your modem at one central location. They're like, oh, we're going down to China. And I said, no, you're going to the United States. <laughs> and, you, and you don't need a visa going this route. <laughs> well, anyway, the crew is up. They're doing their well-deserved lunch break right now. And I decided to crawl down into the pit and just take a look at some of the forms that they've already put together inside here. Uh, it's better for me to come down here while they're up there because I don't want to be stumbling over everybody down here. You can actually see uh, they, are, they, they have some of the forms built. And you see the forms right here. And we'll go down to the form right here. So they'll be filling these in with concrete pretty soon. And uh, I'm thinking, t so today is, today is Thursday and they said by Saturday, but there's a lot of forms that need to be done. So, mm, again, optimistically, it's going to be Saturday. Mm, could be Monday, because you know they they have Sunday off. Well, anyway, since the crew is grabbing a bite to eat, I'm going to take the same opportunity to grab a bite to eat myself in my Rocky Road uh, handy dandy sandwich box that I have. Uh, I got a couple of PBJs inside there and a couple of uh, bananas. I I do want to give a warm shout out. To my friends who visited yesterday, the two subscribers, which was uh, uh, Adrian and Connie, uh, they actually came from Lukban, and I have to apologize. I said Lucena. Uh, I don't know. It was. It must have been in one of our text messages or something like that. Uh, but they're actually from Lukban, which is just north of Lucena. And uh, I want to thank them for coming and visiting me yesterday. And it was an honor to have you guys actually come and travel that long distance just to visit me here at the uh, at Villa Feliz. And uh, ho hopefully I got them st steered back in the right direction because I had them going towards uh, San Juan in a, in a jeepney yesterday. And San Juan is a little bit off the beaten track. But hopefully they made it back fine. I got a I got a text message from them when they did get back, so they're they're it, it must not have been too far off of the beaten track because they got back at a good time. So anyway, again, thank you to Adrian and Connie for stopping by yesterday and for the wonderful drone footage that you did. Anyway, I'm going to post uh, their 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 YouTube website here, uh, a Brit's Philippine destination. And uh, if you get an opportunity, please stop by their site also and check out what they have going on on their YouTube site. So anyway, I'm going to go grab a bite to eat and uh, we'll be back in just a little bit.
Well, anyway, it looks like it cleared up a bit out here. We had lots of clouds over. We got a little bit of drizzle. Uh, that was right after lunch, and uh, but everything's nice. Got a nice light breeze going right now. So we're basically in a in a a. Uh, there's like three teams working right now. Yeah, the team is usually a couple, a couple, two or three guys out here, and they're doing the assembly of the forms out here. And these guys are helping them also. So these, this is the assembly team. And then what you have inside the pit, you got them taking the all the forms that are being done out here, and they're actually fine tuning it uh, to all the the uh, column and and beam structures inside here. And then you got the guys way over there, and they're over there digging the, the cistern pit. I'm going to take a look, see how far they got uh, from this morning when I first stopped by. Hey, you guys are, get, you guys are getting deeper and deeper down here. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think we should just make this a swimming pool. What do you think? Yeah, swimming pool. Swimming pool, good. Good idea. <laughs> So I, I mentioned it briefly earlier about the cistern, and the, the main reason for the cistern is to collect water that can be either used later on or for any type of a flooding that might be going down towards the garage. There'll be drains inside there that goes inside the cistern. Now the, the cistern is actually being built way back here in the back. The, the ground goes down to the backyard. You, it actually it continues to go down and slope down in that direction. So you want to put the cistern, if, especially if you're using it in a, a for for drainage for like for the garage, you want to put it at the lowest point inside the yard. So it's hard to see, but if you look inside here, if you look inside here, right here, that's that's actually ground level. <laughs> Ground level is there, not there. It's down there. So if you see where they're at, they're about they're about one meter. They're about one meter down, where from ground level, even though it's way below the stuff, the dirt that was spread from the excavator. So <laughs> they still got they still got two more meters to go down the ground because this is going to be a three meter deep cistern. So <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a big hole when it gets done. Well, not only is the cistern going to be effective for our drainage uh, to prevent flooding inside the garage, but the, the cistern is also going to use, be used for irrigation here in the yard. This whole backyard here, uh, and in the side, and the side over here as well, because uh, there's going to be lots of plants all along here, up to where we're going to have steps walking down that's going to bring you to the, to the driveway and the, and the entrance going into the into the garage. And and that's a real nice design. Uh, it, this it was a basically a, uh, a design by myself and my architect. Uh, my my thought was, well, instead of having a straight retaining wall, we're going to have all these steps that walk, walk up. And I said to my architect, I said, but I also need a some type of a ramp to get the garden tools, a uh, lawnmower or whatever like that, wheelbarrow, from the garage and get it up to approximately around two meters up from basement level up into the backyard. So what he suggested is we're going to do one side, which is going to be on the left side. It could be on either, but he's got it on the left side. It's going to be a ramp for you to bring the whatever you need to roll up there. And then we're going to have the steps that go up from the garage level. And the steps going to be made out of, it's like the concrete that has this, the gaps in between where you can actually put grass inside there. So it will be drainage. And it will look real nice because you'll have some green growth inside there. And uh, that's a way that we'll get from the garage area into the backyard. And again, the, the, the slope, the ramp, is actually going to be used for all the tools that I'm going to need for um, getting from down there to back here. So let's get back, let's get back to the irrigation. Well, even, even though everything is super green around here, because they have, they have a pretty wet rainy season around here. And I think the rainy season is probably around September... For about January, because that's why at January, at the end of by the end of January, that's why they recommend that is the best time, the optimum time to actually build a house. That way, everything starts getting dry, and they can do the stuff like they're doing the digging and they to pour the concrete, and they don't have a lot of interruption. Because you got to realize, we've been we're into day 22 today, and day 22, we are we are how many? We've had basically no days of heavy rain. We've had a little trickle, maybe three days. But we've and we had one day because you can go through on every one of the videos and you can see we've only had one day where we had maybe 15 minutes of actual rain from just an isolated cloud, 
and it moved on and we were able to go. So we've been really lucky so far at Knock on Bamboo. So uh, well, we've been lucky when it comes to that. But you want to make sure if you're building a house that you're at least to the point where you have the roof on your house by the time rainy season comes. And our schedule shows, I think it's around June is what I said. And I can go back to the schedule, take a look. But by June, we should have the roof on. That way, when they need to start doing things on the inside, they have protection inside there as well. So anyway, it is around five o'clock. These guys are gonna be getting off work here pretty soon. Um, just doing a walk around real quick around the site. Uh, to kind of get a grasp on where we are at right now with the with the forms the form work is going a little bit slower uh, than expected but what I'm noticing is they're being meticulous uh, about making sure everything is right and and it, it, the reason it's also going a little bit slower I think than expected uh, my observation is is remember the way they cut the trenches inside there they were a little bit off on this calculation so it's making it a little bit more difficult to build the the forms but what I notice is they are being extremely cautious and measuring and, and actually today was the first time I've seen a level a real <laughs> real level not a water bubble thing in a hose or a plum uh, plumb bob going inside so they are making all the precautions to make sure everything is is level and that uh, that the forms actually have enough gap inside there so that all the cement will actually form around the rebar properly so even if we don't get the the pour on Saturday that's fine with me because I want to make sure that the forms are accurate and uh, and we have a good pour when we do it. So it's all about the foundation. And that's the Tortang Klung. Oh, and that's the one with the vegetables and the coconut. Oh yeah. Oh, that Miko looks, Express. Oh, that looks so good. Oh yeah. I'm gonna eat good tonight. Today, I'm gonna to go inside and get some of that Tortan Kalong that Tess made, uh, one of my favorite Philippine foods. And uh, I, if you don't know what Tortan Kalong is, it's, it's uh, eggplant, and they kind of boil it, and they flatten it, and they dip it in this egg, in this egg and, uh, and, they, and they kind of fry it, and it's very, very good. A uh, little bit of Noor uh, original sauce on there, you can't beat it. And don't forget, uh, please join me tomorrow at, in uh, Manila uh, for World Bex. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, please share, and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, I will see you tomorrow on My PI Dream.